What's going on guys, Nick Hellman here, aka The Crypto Hitman, back with another interview edition of Learn Crypto. Today we have with us The Gray369, one of the co-founders of The Gray's Currency on Pulse Chain. Now we do know Pulse Chain is kind of the uh, uh, black swan, if you will, of cryptocurrencies right now. Some people hate it, some people love it. But The Gray's Currency and their PTGC token continues to go up and to the right due to the token economics and the token utilities built into this great ecosystem. So I wanted to get Hayden on here to kind of talk about what is the Gray's currency and we'll dive deeper into how you can benefit from the entire ecosystem. So first of all, how are you doing? And then I guess let's start with the brief overview of the Gray's currency and then we'll get in the weeds. Yeah, how are you doing? Thank you for having me on. Doing good, doing good. Yeah, so pretty much in short, PTGC is a fee-based token and all the fees go to supporting the project itself and creating sustainable growth for the project. Um, the difference, like a lot of people tend to relate this to a standard reflection or buy and burn token, but the difference with this protocol is since we created a liquidity web with the protocol and we have tons of burnt liquidity, we actually no longer need any human interaction with the protocol to create more buy and sell pressure on the protocol that obviously increases the volume, which then increases the fees that we get to incur over time, making it so the price continues to go up, even if there's no human interaction. Obviously human interaction increases this process and makes this process go quicker, but uh, really the, the cutting edge tech behind it is we've created a system that actually doesn't need any human, human interaction for the price to continue to go up. And the way this happens is, since we have a liquidity web, the liquidity web is tied to like 20 different tokens. And all these tokens move up and down at different times. And sometimes all together, sometimes they fall together, sometimes one runs, sometimes one falls. Every time this happens, it creates a specific arbitrage opportunity for our bots to then interact with our protocol and then they move money from one LP pool to the other LP pool, balancing the tokens in those LP pools. And when they balance the tokens, those R bots also have to pay the fees. And this happens all day long. This doesn't happen like once a, day, once a time a day, two times a day. It's constantly happening. Every time there's an opportunity for these bots to make a little bit of money, they end up paying our fees. So ultimately, as the whole entire market moves, we actually get to take in value from the whole entire crypto market. And really this effect isn't even just on Pulse Chain because we know that the whole entire market is actually connected. Like if the market dumps, Bitcoin dumps, which makes Ethereum dump, which then in turn makes Pulse Chain dump. So all the markets are technically tied via liquidity and they all kind of move around together. So what this then in turns is we took something that we know is guaranteed in the crypto and market space, and that's markets go up and down. And then we found a way to capitalize on this market going up and down and bring constant value back to one protocol, even if the market is going down or if the market's going up. And I believe this is one of the first times it's ever been done before. And I think that shows in the chart, ultimately. Yeah, this is like when I first got into PTGC. So full disclosure, I've been in it for quite a while. If you're part of my Learn Crypto community, you're up, I don't know, 800, 900,000% gains plus passive income. But the reason I wanted to have these guys back on is because I think the messaging kind of gets lost or people kind of forget about what's going on here. But the reason that PTGC is a company hold, as you can see here on the TGC stats on their website, is the total supply continues to shift from just being out in supply to being burned. You guys are now at 10.56% of the PTGC tokens are burned and you got another 5.2% locked in the liquidity pool. So, I mean, as time goes on and as he's talking about there, for every single liquidity pool they have, so they have a pool with Atropa and Teddy Bear and PLS. If Teddy Bear goes up in price, not only does it drag PTGC up in price as well, but the trading volume on that has buy and sell taxes. A portion of that is used to buy back the PTGC off the open market and burn it 
And another portion of that is used to buy back the PTTC and give it away to holders and stakers. So while you're sitting here holding, you're earning PTTC, which is a deflationary asset, which has a history of going up and to the right, which means big APRs for you, more valuable tokens because the supply continues to decrease. And it looks like you guys are projecting in the next six months, you'll have 18.39% of your total supply burned, which is pretty crazy. Do you want to kind of speak more about the dynamics of the deflationary method or how holders of the PTGC token can actually earn for supporting your project? Yeah, so obviously both those metrics are based on the fee structure of the protocol. So within the smart contract of PTGC, there is code that automatically buys and burns the project and automatically sends reflections and rewards to the current holders and stakers of the protocol. I'm talking about the stakers and holders first. If you're holding and staking PTGC, with every single transaction, you're actually earning more PTGC. And this isn't coming from inflating the supply of the token. It's actually majority just coming from the R bots doing their thing. And then the R bots are gonna do their thing due to this liquidity web that we set up. And every time they do their thing, a portion of those tokens get distributed to all the people who hold and stake the project, making it so you constantly are earning more shares of the pie. And there is only so many shares, it's actually decreasing with every transaction as well. As time goes on, you'll accumulate more, but there will be less supply on the market, which then in turn, just based on math, makes it so the tokens you are receiving technically have a better chance of being worth more because there's less of them on the market, simple supply and demand what happens price goes up yeah that's awesome i do like too that you guys have multiple options there you can just be a holder if you want if you want that flexibility and the ability to sell quickly if you want you can also stake to earn kind of almost double the rewards now if you do withdraw your staking there is a one percent fee and that is passed on to the other stakers so very small fee and then you can go a step further and actually stake and lock your tokens you get the biggest rewards but what is kind of the penalty for those who are staked and locked is it like a time duration or is it a bigger fee than those who stake and want to withdraw yeah, so if you're someone who does see the value in locking or delayed gratification, we gave the option to lock your tokens up. And how this works is you can pick anything from 90 days to 10 years. And every year you lock further, you actually get more percentage of your rewards earned. So every person earns a portion of their rewards based on the amount they have in that pool. And if you've locked for 10 years, you get 100% of your rewards. And if you're locked for 90 days, you get 50% of your rewards. But the other 50% just get sent to the debt address. Mm -hmm. So that that's how we figured to make it fair for people that lock longer. So the math gets distributed based on how much you have locked. But then de dependent on the amount of time you have locked, is the portion you get of those rewards. So the longer you lock, the more of the portion you get. The shorter you lock, you get a less of that portion, but the portion you don't get just gets sent to the debt address. So it just creates more buy and burn pressure on the project, which again, just creates price appreciation over time. Yeah, that's awesome. Very interesting concept. It seems to be working. I saw a tweet that somebody posted uh, the other day. It was something like, PLS, which is one of the blue chips, that is the gas token of Pulse Chain for people who don't understand. So it's equivalent to Ethereum for the ETH network. PLS went up by 3x, and I think PTGC went up by 25x plus passive income. Is that Are those numbers accurate? And that, if so, that kind of shows the power of the liquidity web that you guys have created and the upside potential for those who believe that Pulse Chain is near a low and is going to go higher this bull cycle. Yeah, yeah, I'm the one that made that post. So when PLS ran up a 3.5 X, like right now it's down from that. It's like back at the lows. So PLS ran up 3.5 X and technically retraced that whole entire amount almost, but it's down 75% um, from that all time high. In that same time scale, PTGC ran up 25 X. So, you know, whatever, however many more X's that is but then PTGC only retraced 65%, which is 
very, very important to take notice of because when you have something that runs up many more X's, usually they tend to fall a little harder than the gas token, pretty stable token of the blockchain. But we actually tended to do a lot more X's with a lot more sta stability on the downside. And that's just simply based on the tokenomics that we have behind our protocol constantly supporting the price of the project, doing buy and burns, redistributing the, tech, the tokens into stronger hands, which ultimately is just simple math-based protocol, math-based things put into the smart contract that is designed to keep the price moving in an upwards trajectory over time. And it's just obviously doing what it should do. Yeah, and, so um, it just seems like you guys are outperforming to the upside and outperforming to the downside. So realize guys, PTGC itself is kind of tied to the success of Pulse Chain, Pulse X, Teddy Bear, Tropa, and some of the other liquidity pairings that it's in. Just like I say, that the Ethereum spot ETF, when inflows come to Ethereum, that could trigger the next alt season because if Ethereum goes higher, it's gonna drag all these ERC20s higher as well. And then people are gonna be able to speculate on that ecosystem because they're making a lot of money on their ETH. Well, the same kind of applies for Pulse Chain and with PTGC. Obviously, PTGC is still doing well off the lows and outperforming Pulse. But if these ecosystem plays, if Pulse, PulseX, Atropa, INC, and all these other projects that PTGC has liquidity with do well, it's going to drag PTGC price higher. It's going to enhance the token utility of all these buybacks and burns of the PTGC, which makes your tokens more rare, which historically supply shock would occur and the price would go higher. So uh, I think it's a great opportunity. It's a great comfy hold for me. It produces passive income. And historically, it is saying, hey, we're going to outperform to the upside. But in times of bear market and turmoil, we're also going to outperform to the downside. Yes, we're going to go down with the overall Pulse Chain market, but we will outperform. You'll be earning passive income and the Treasury will be buying back and burning the PTGC at critical moments in time. Am I kind of correct in that thesis? Yeah, 100 percent. And that's like another key feature in that process is the whole time that we ran up 25x compared to Pulse Chain and retraced less than Pulse Chain, every person that was participating in our ecosystem was also earning APR at the same time. And I think that's very important because I look at like my Pulse Chain and my PTTC and my UFO and all the tokens I have, when bull markets come and stuff like that, I don't want to actually get rid of my whole entire nest egg and like go into fiat or something like that. I want to have these protocols here on the blockchain, just earning more crypto for me. So I try to create protocols that people can invest their money in and know that their money is actually working for them. And due to the web design, when you participate in these ecosystems, all this value is actually working for you on the blockchain. It's not just sitting in a wallet somewhere waiting for more people to come in and buy. That's 99% of crypto. So, right. so these protocols, every time someone comes in, they're actually putting their funds into the web. And then this web is actually generating yield for all the people within the ecosystem. So all the money is actually getting put to work. I would say kind of similar to like when you put money in the bank, how the bank uses your money to make more money. But instead of just handing your money out to the bank that they do whatever you want, you can actually see on chain everything what your money is doing for you in this liquidity web system. And you can just automatically get your money out at any time due to the huge amount of back liquidity on our protocol. Both UFO and PTDC have 1.5 million or I think even $2 million with PTDC of back liquidity on these protocols, which is accessible at any time. Most of it's burnt. And as Pulse Chain ecosystem goes up or PTDC or UFO or both ecosystems go up, the liquidity pools will grow and grow and grow and grow. And as these liquidity pools grow and grow and grow, the arbitrage bots will have to move more money, which makes it so they have to buy and burn more supply and pay more rewards. And I'll give a simple example of that right now. So right now we get roughly, let's say, $10,000 of volume just from arbitrage bots on a daily basis at our current size and at the current price PLS is at. But if PLS 10Xs or PTGC or both of them add up to a 10X, we will actually be 
start getting a hundred thousand dollars of volume from the arbitrage bots because the liquidity pool size will 10x along with the price of these protocols and as the liquidity pools 10x now the r bots have to move 10x the money which when the r bots move 10x the money they're going to have to buy and burn 10x they'll have to um pay out 10x apr so right now people are earning roughly 10 percent apy on this protocol but with a simple 10x of the blockchain or of this protocol they would now be earning a hundred percent apy on a fully deflationary project with completely sustainable fee, um, rewards getting paid out so with every single reward getting paid out there's that equivalent or more pls getting put into the liquidity pools to back that yield getting paid out and no protocol is actually backing their yield besides ours i believe and that's very important because if you don't back that yield you're paying out that yield sometimes turns into down pressure on the chart which is not a good thing um so this same metric comes into play let's say if ufo or pgc do a 10x and then the blockchain as a whole does a 10x well then we would be sitting at 100x because those two get multiplied together so imagine if our liquidity pools go up by 100x in this bull market well now the R bots will have to move 100x more of the money so now we're going to be buying and burning at 100x the rate and paying out 100x the rewards which would then make the apy of a thousand percent without any inflation right and that would end up making us probably the highest yielding protocol to ever exist on any blockchain with sustainable yield which would yeah. be just crazy you have a lot of good points there too so i mean effectively crypto markets and stock markets and everything is player versus player in order for your price of your asset to go higher you need somebody else to buy it right well with ptgc even people who aren't participating in the grace currency know nothing about it if they're buying pls or teddy bear or trope or p die or inc or plsx without them knowing the r bots could be trading that and actually benefiting the ptgc economy so that that's amazing and like he said the apys of course are in more ptgc tokens if that price goes up that effective apr in us dollar terms goes up as well and this is all without any new tokens ever coming to the market there's actually being buybacks and burns they burnt 11 percent of their token supply no new tokens are coming to the market ever they're all fully in circulation and another thing us at learn crypto love passive income here's an opportunity to get in near the ground floor i mean obviously if you've been with me for a while you're in at you know a million dollar market cap or eight hundred thousand dollar market cap and right now it's around nine million but still relatively cheap for a crypto ecosystem as a whole you can simply put money in stake your ptgc and then whatever without ever touching your base if you need the income if you need the dry powder for other opportunities simply go and claim your staking rewards and sell those ptgc into the market for us dollars bitcoin ethereum pulse whatever you may need that way you're maintaining your base while producing passive income in that ptgc economy and effectively you're not really hurting your underlying because when you sell that there is a token tax on that which a percentage of that again goes back to create this 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 hamster wheel this cycle of buybacks and burn on the ptgc token so now that we kind of have an understanding of ptgc let's dive a little bit into amplifier tokens real quick and this is really the kind of bread and butter of the ptgc economy and why you guys have so many burns so on your website i see here that ufo is kind of the one that is primarily discussed i guess maybe that's the one that is officially uh promoted by you guys and sponsored by you guys this is also one of the newest ones so before you talk about ufo i will mention that my preferred amplifier tokens outside of ufo which we'll discuss is one is called alien and one is called burn burn is kind of a hyper hyper deflationary token and alien just by holding you earn various other tokens including burn including ptgc and others do you have any kind of information on burn or alien off the top of your head that you want to briefly discuss and then i'll let you dive into ufo before we kind of wrap this up yeah, so Alien isn't actually made by, by our team. It was made by a community member as a support project to the PTGC ecosystem. And the person who created it took a lot of the ideas that we implemented with PTGC and also did it with Alien. So ultimately, Alien's just completely benevolent as well. There's just tons of burnt LP. There's our bots moving that money around as well. And every time an R bot moves that money around, it pays out reflections or rewards 
of all the, not all of the, but a lot of the PTGC tokens to the people holding the alien token. And then also they burn a lot of these tokens as well. So that one's not like an official team project, but it was done by a benevolent community member that had as what's shown on the blockchain, completely good intentions with everything they've done. Um, each amplifier kind of has their own little twist to it, and each twist is kind of unique to its name. And then on top of that, they are supporting the PTGC ecosystem while also supporting themselves at the same time. And they're mainly designed for our bots to move the money around. And then as they move the money around, a portion of that fee just goes back to the PTGC ecosystem, constantly helping the price via other avenues. Um, kind of just like if someone had multiple businesses and they're making a little bit off of every business and that was all just ending up in one hub, that's kind of the same idea here is horizontal, horizontal growth, if you want to explain it that way. But burn is kind of, in my opinion, the one most people are attracted to because it's very easy to understand. And really it's just on every single transaction, 3% of it goes to buying and burning its own supply. And it's already bought and burned 22, maybe 23% of its own supply. And that's within the first year that it's been out. And it's actually operating and doing this in a very low, like, so all these protocols are completely volatile and volume-based protocols. So they're somewhat reliant on the blockchain we're built on to have tons of volume and volatility. Well, if you know about Pulse Chain, you know that we've actually been lacking that quite a lot. So technically, these projects should be running weak right now because the blockchain we're built on don't have a lot of volume and volatility. But these projects actually have really amazing charts. So what does that tell you? The machines are working so well that they're actually working exceptional in an environment that isn't in their favor. So right. once the environment switches and PT or and Pulse Chain becomes an ex a successful environment with volume and volatility, these machines will actually start running better and better and better. And a lot of people would be like, how? These charts already look amazing. They've already been outperforming most other things in crypto. And it's like, exactly. That's how strong these machines are. They are completely volume and volatility based protocols and they're actually been built in a place that doesn't have that as of now. If that does come to these blockchain, these projects are gonna be running absolutely astonishing. Yeah, I mean, like, that's why that's really, what I always really say about these. Really, my Pulse Chain portfolio is pretty much just the blue chips. I have PLS and PLSX farming to earn that 10% yield in INC. And then it's all in the kind of the PTGC web for the most part. I mean, it's really PTGC, Alien, Burn. And then we'll discuss a little bit about UFO here. Uh, before we wrap it up, I'll, I'll let you get into this newest project, UFO. And the reason being is if you believe that Pulse Chain is going to have success, which if you know Richard Hart, it might be delayed, but it, I think it's going to happen. He has billions of dollars. He's going to inject that. He he had just bought a ton of Ethereum. Once the Ethereum inflows start and Ethereum goes price higher, what does he do with that all that ETH? Does he inject it into Pulse Chain? I don't know. Tons of speculation. That's not what this video is about. But nonetheless, Pulse Chain is undervalued. If users come to Pulse Chain, Pulse Chain price goes higher. These will outperform nearly everything on Pulse Chain while producing passive income. And you really don't have to do nothing. Just buy it, hold it, stake it chillax for a second have that delayed gratification and you will be a winner and that's why i love it so much so exciting times ahead i believe for these uh projects i'll have all in the description all the contract addresses for my four favorite ones that we kind of talked about on here like you said there is i think six seven eight nine ten of them i don't have all of them in my portfolio i focus on ptgc alien burn and then this ufo which we're about to talk about so i guess tell me a little bit quickly about ufo the newest ptgc ecosystem project and why people who own PTGC or are, are wanting to start their journey in Pulse Chain should have UFO in their portfolio. Yeah, so when we came out with PTGC, everything that we were creating actually had never really been done before. So we were basing all of our theories off of what we found on the blockchain, but it had never been next necessarily tested yet. And what we were finding, we believed it was gonna be successful just based on studying everything around us and we we're taking hugely educated guesses, but there was no guarantees that all of this was actually gonna 100% work. Well, within two months, 
it was all verified that everything was working as we planned. And moving forward, we knew these strategies worked. And what we found actually was the best performing part of these projects was the parts that relied on no human interaction. And the main thing was that was the liquidity web. The liquidity web was working so well that we wanted to find a way to build a project that each user could participate in their liquid in the liquidity web on their own and earn their own portion of the fees generated from the liquidity web itself. And what that creates is every user then could come into the UFO protocol and add a portion to the liquidity web. And when they add a portion to the liquidity web, they're actually generating all their own rewards because they're actually making their own piece of the liquidity web and they're earning their own piece of the market. As the market moves around, they use these liquidity webs and then they earn their portion of the fee. And what in turn this does is as more people participate and start earning their own rewards, it makes it so there's more volume and vol volume to the protocol, which makes it so the protocol itself buys and burns itself faster and faster and faster and faster. And with a normal farm token or a farm, they usually pay out in inflationary tokens. But due to this new structure and this new idea that we've built on blockchain, you actually don't need to pay out in an inflationary token anymore. So these protocols are paying out in PLS. So based on this, we can now pay people out in the in the gas token. So now any user can just go and get into any project they want because they get paid in PLS. So they can either compound into UFO, they could go and buy, you know, they could exit out onto ETH, they could just hold the PLS. And the cool thing about this is most in farming tokens, as more people come to the farm, their APY actually becomes less because they have to share the APY token or the incentive token with other people. But with this protocol, as more people add into the system, since everyone is generating their own yield, they actually aren't taking away from anyone else. They're all earning their own yield, so their yield isn't decreasing with more people coming in. And they're actually all increasing the price of the token because the more LP that gets put in, the more buying and burning that's happening. So everyone's actually supporting the price more and helping the price move upwards, which then obviously helps their bags on the other side. Yeah, so it sounds like uh, UFO is a brand new idea with this liquidity web and a great uh, ecosystem uh, addition because it's relying now you can be the liquidity provider, you can earn PLS to do what you want. And it's again, non, it's again, non inflationary, but deflationary, you're buying back and you're burning UFO. You're also it looks like 1% of the buy fees is actually buying back and burning PTGC. So again, all these amplifier tokens are going back to the mothership going back to PTGC and providing some kind of benefit, whether it's liquidity adding, whether it's buybacks and burns, whether it's buybacks and distributions of tokens to the PTGC holders. I love what you guys are doing with this ecosystem. And I will also say that the PTGC holders for a lot of these, like Alien, for example, received airdrops. So you are kind of being rewarded for the expansion of this ecosystem. And I would expect if the ecosystem continues to expand, that the core holders of PTGC and these other original amplifier tokens probably have more benefits coming in the future. Do you have any last thoughts, the Gray369 or Hayden, whatever you guys want to call them? Do you have any last thoughts before we wrap this up? And again, guys, everything will be in the description below so you can get involved. I'm telling you right now, if you have any funds in Pulse Chain, this is the ecosystem that I'm choosing to be a part of. This is the ecosystem that I feel comfy with. And this is the ecosystem that programmably will go higher when ultimately Pulse Chain goes higher here in the near future. Yeah, that's that's just a good point. Like at the end of the day, the honest truth is with these blue chip altcoins on Pulse Chain as a blockchain, this is how they work. Every buy that comes in, every X that Pulse Chain does, these altcoins get for free because of bonded liquidity ratios. If one PLS is one PTGC and PLS goes up 5X, one PTGC goes up 5X. It's as simple as that. So anyone that comes onto this blockchain, if they're buying Teddy Bear, if they're buying a trope, if they're buying PLS, if they're buying any of these tokens, they're actually also just buying PTGC at the same time. And that's how these leverage plays work. The cool thing about it is a lot of people that do end up on a blockchain don't only just get the gas token. They also start to speculate on some of the altcoins. So if a portion or if a good portion or a not a good portion, but if a portion of those people 
actually go down the rabbit hole and get into the PTGC ecosystem, you actually start to double dip on those people because they not only bought into the PLS project or PLS blockchain that brought up the price of the whole entire ecosystem, but then if a portion of that money goes down the chain of chain and lands into PTGC, you're actually getting compound Xing now. So that that's ultimately why these are just such leverage plays on Pulse Chain as a whole is because you're not only getting all the growth of the blockchain itself, but you're also getting the growth of your individual protocol. And as I kind of just talked about is you need reasons for people to buy the protocol. And I think PTGCs is pretty, pretty self-explanatory. There hasn't been a project I know of that's ever built a utility that actually isn't even reliant on people using the utility. It was just getting the money there up front. And we've already done that and burnt it. So that can't even go anywhere. So this utility is going to operate without even human interaction for the rest of existence of the blockchain. And I, I think that just metric is really cool. And I think over time, a lot of people will start to understand how powerful that is right now. I don't think people are understanding it because people tend to just try to relate things to what they already know. And the only thing that people can relate this project to is just a standard reflection or a standard buy and burn token. Mm -hmm. But there's just so much more under the hood. And I believe once Pulse Chain becomes a little bit more successful and this machine still really starts to operate in full gear is when people will start to understand what this machine is actually doing, which then in turn, the machine starts to run better. And on top of that, people see the machine actually running better. So then people also start to flood in and buy the protocol because they see it running how I've explained it running for this long. Yeah, I think there's a lot of upside here. Thanks for coming on here and explaining the Gray's currency and the broader ecosystem. Uh, we at least touch base on it. Maybe we'll have to come back on to dive deeper into individual amplifier tokens. Nonetheless, again, guys, Pulse Chain, great opportunity over there. But if you are a degenerate, maybe you want to chase the Pulse Chain memes or you want to chase Teddy Bear. But for me, I like to kind of have a nice comfy hold that I think has many ups, ups, uh, X's potential to the upside. I think PTC checks all those boxes. It has the buyback and burn, which we love. It has passive income. It has every single token already in the circulating supply. And it has liquidity bonding with the blue chips and other speculative assets on the blockchain. This is something we've looked for in Ethereum. We did it with BSC Network and BNB when that was hot uh, last market cycle. We've done it with BASE, and now the opportunity is staring you in the face over here in Pulse Chain. So make sure to hit that like, share, and subscribe button, and check out the description below for all of the contract addresses that you need to get involved. And again, if you want Hayden or anybody else to come on this show again to talk about the Grace Currency, leave a comment below, and we'll get them on here again. So I'll talk to you guys soon.